Champions aren't born. They're a lifetime in the making. That oh. is unreal. To be a champion is to own your success. She'll win the NCAA all around. Natalie Boychik, eight-time All-American. Love how excited she gets. Miley O'Keefe, Pat Till Gymnast of the Year. Olivia Troutman, 2019 National Champion. Trinity Thomas, 15-time All-American. Today, every woman on the floor has the heart of a warrior. She has driven to win for herself and her sisters. Coming together as a team and having that same end goal has definitely driven me to be a champion. Seeing my teammates put so much hard work in, it just pushes me even more and it makes me want to win a national championship. Today's stage represents a lifetime of talent, passion, and fight. It takes the heart of a champion to make it this far. But in the end, only one team can actually be the champion. Welcome inside the spectacular Dickies Arena in Fort Worth, Texas, for our live coverage of the 2021 Women's NCAA Gymnastics Championship. The top eight teams in the country are here. They competed in two separate semifinal sessions yesterday with Florida, Michigan, Oklahoma, and Utah advancing to today's championship final. Hi everyone, I'm Bart Connor along with my fellow Olympic medalist Kathy Johnson Clark. It's a thrill to be on ABC today, and we're gonna get set to crown the 2021 national champions, Kathy. And Bart, the semifinals yesterday had everything from spectacular gymnastics to competitive drama. If the energy, heart, and soul that these athletes poured into their performances yesterday were rocket fuel, we'd all be on the moon right now. <laughs> there was plenty of drama, and it started in semifinal number one. Just an hour before the competition, Cal was escorted off the floor after a concern over COVID contact tracing issues, and then 42 minutes later, they came back out. They were cleared to return, and they had an incredible competition. Michigan was stellar with four great all-around gymnasts, including Sierra Brooks, who tied for second in the all-around. Florida started lukewarm on bars and made up ground on beam to put them in fighting position, and they just barely stayed ahead of Cal and Minnesota, so Michigan and Florida advanced. Then in semifinal two, Oklahoma scored over 198 to secure their spot, and senior Anastasia Webb nailed this ball to win the all-around. And Alabama put up a fight with heart, grit, and grace as Luisa Blanca tied for second in the all-around, and Lexi Graber tumbled her way to a share of the floor title. Utah grabbed their destiny by their hand grips and swung bars with true underdog passion and like never before. But the remaining spot was up for grabs until the final score came in, and it was Utah. Those three teams separated by just 375 ten thousandths of a point. Utah and Oklahoma, the final two to advance. Talk about the NCAA championship history. You see the Blue Bloods in gymnastics here, Oklahoma, Florida, Utah, and Michigan. Michigan is the only team yet to win a championship title. They've been second twice. Okay, the stage is set here in Fort Worth. The conclusion of an amazing weekend of gymnastics. And at the end of today's competition, we will know who are the 2021 NCAA champions. Stay with us, folks. Way better. We're back inside Dickey's Arena for the NCAA Gymnastics Championship here in Fort Worth. A quick reminder, everyone, you can watch every single routine on the ESPN app. As we take a look at the event format, four teams compete for a national championship. All four apparatus will run simultaneously. Six gymnasts per team compete on each apparatus, but just the top five scores will count towards their team total. Now, it's different here at the NCAAs. The six judges in this competition, so high and low scores are dropped, and they average the remaining four scores. The best of the best in the United States set to go. A reminder, you can watch every single routine on the ESPN app. Every apparatus has its own channel, as well as the all-around channel, with all four apparatus going at once. Oklahoma in the upper left there, getting ready to start on the vault. Utah in your upper right will be on the bars. Florida on the beam in your bottom left. And on your bottom right is Michigan on the floor in this first of four rotations. 
Bart, Oklahoma starts on vault. This is an event where they're ranked third in the nation. We're going to see two full twisting Yurchenkos and four one and a halves. The fulls are 995 start value, and the one and a halves are 10 0 start value. So a little bit of an advantage goes to those with the higher start value. Audrey Davis is the first vaulter for Oklahoma. Abby Paulson, the first on bars for Utah. Peyton Richards on beam for Florida. And Carly Bauman for Michigan on floor. And a stick for Oklahoma to start the competition. The left corner box at the bottom is Peyton Richards. This is an important series right here, triple series. Oh, no. Mm. And Florida starts with a ball. This is exactly the problem they had yesterday. It put a lot of pressure on the remainder of the lineup. Mm. And this is an event where Florida is ranked number one. They have been superb all season but have struggled as of late. For the bulk of the season, Florida was number one or close to number one in the rankings all year long. Started to show some inconsistency late in the season. What an unlucky start. Remember, six athletes will go on each apparatus. They just have to count the best five scores so they can drop the score. But that just now puts enormous pressure on all the other five women in that lineup. And this is a lineup that can handle that pressure. They usually embrace this kind of pressure. They've been referred to as the beam queens. Well, they're gonna need every jewel in every crown of the remaining beamers as they approach this event. So not what Florida wanted to start this competition. On the bars now. Alani Sabado, the freshman from Temecula, California. Abby Paulson was their leadoff performer. Remember, there's four events all going on at the same time. So if you have a favorite team, go to the ESPN app and you can watch every routine of your favorite team, as well as what we're putting together here on ABC TV. Sabado is a bar specialist, so this is the only event she will compete in this competition. Allie Stern on vault for Oklahoma. A one and a half twist. Oh, wow. Huge, oh. huge vault. Wow. They are starting off so strong. And I, I've said this so many times all season long. Oklahoma knows how to find these landings because of the way they train this event. They set it up in warm ups to get the highest vault and the perfect shape to find the landing. Sabado now for Utah on the bars after Abby Paulson led them off with a 9-8-6-2-5. Impressive. She's going to open with a giant to a blind change right there and a straddle Jaeger, that first release move in the routine. Here's the second after this toe handstand, the transition flight to low bar, little leg separation there. Every little thing is going to count in this competition, especially these landings on the dismount. She does a double layout. Oh, so nice. And fights, fights to keep those feet on the floor. This is an event where Utah has the least amount of depth. They lost three athletes that normally compete in their lineup, one to retirement and two to injuries. So if they're gonna be a contender today, they need to hit there and they got two solid routines to get started. Anastasia Webb will be next up for the Sooners. You saw her vault in the opening of the show. The senior from Morton Grove, Illinois, the NCAA all-around champion as of yesterday. And it is clean, effortless. Oh, just slightly under-rotated, slight hop back on the landing. He's coming after Allie Stern had a 9.95 in that second spot for the Sooners. Megan Skaggs will be next up on beam for Florida. A lot of pressure on the Gators here. The senior from Marietta, Georgia, Georgia, although, has had a, an outstanding season this year, Kathy. Megan is ranked 17th in the nation on this event, and she is superb. Her basics are flawless, and she shows all of the qualities for balance beam. Flexibility, posture, opens with this wolf turn, very solid. You see the score there for Peyton Richards is only a 9.0375. Watch the precision of her movement and the pace of this routine. Perfect split in the air 
The judges look for the amplitude off the beam, the height, as well as the shape. Here's her Acro series, back handspring layout. Solid as can be. It's impossible to explain the kind of pressure that this feels like at the national championship. You're following a fall and you really must stay in the moment in every skill. Beautiful leap series. That's a requirement on the balance beam to connect those two leaps and jumps together. This is how they earn the bonus to elevate their score to that 10-0 start value. Just the dismount side aerial into a full and a perfect landing. Well done for Florida. They're back on track. Great job for Megan Skaggs, the senior All-American on all around and the bars. While she was concluding her routine, Evie Schofer for Oklahoma on the bars with this unusual vault after Anastasia Webb had a 9875. She does the same round off entry and a one and a half twist, but it's in tucked position. And she can go high. Oh my and goodness. And landed it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> She's wow. been waiting all season to have this moment at Nationals. <laughs> she got congratulations there from Lou Ball, who is largely responsible for the good work that Oklahoma does on the vault. Natalie Wojcik now, the junior from Pennsylvania for Michigan on the floor. Nicoletta Kulos before her had a 9-9-2-5. Carly Bowman a 9-8-1-2-5. Natalie Wojcik's floor routine is one of the most beautiful performances you'll see in this competition. The elegance and precision of her movement, the amplitude of the leaps, superb. Michigan is superb on this event. Five nine nines in yesterday's semifinal for this team. Very difficult front with a double twist right into a pike front. The detail, details are just sublime here. The, every attention to detail. Kat Levasseur set to go for the Sooners as their fifth falter. Another big ball, that's a crossover step. She'll have a deduction there, but it's nice in the air. And a gorgeous finish for Natalie Wojcik on floor exercise. Just like yesterday, Michigan is off to a fantastic start. <laughs> Ellie Lazari now set to go for Florida on the beam. Enormous tension over there for the freshman from Wheaton, Illinois, but what a freshman year she has had, Kathy. It has been fantastic. And particularly on this event, she is money here. She's ranked fifth on this event. Megan Skaggs had a 9-8-6-2-5, so Florida getting back on track. Florida's routines are constructed so perfectly to show off all of their strengths. Here's the triple series, two layout step outs. They are just solid, composed, and exceptional in their execution of both the dance and the acrobatic skills. Full turn, you'll see that in every single routine in this competition, that's a requirement. A full pirouette on one foot. Just the dismount for Ellie Lazari. Final vaulter for Oklahoma is Olivia Troutman set to go. And she has scored a 10 on this vault before. A very oh high my. and perfectly stuck. I'm telling you, that oh. is ice water <laughs> in those veins to be able to control the adrenaline and the flight. She's been out of the all-around competition for two years with a foot injury of all things, and man, did she plant that ball. Score before her, Kat Lavasser had a 9-8-3-7-5. Back to the bars now. Molly O'Keefe. And another beautiful performer in terms of form, really keeps those legs straight. 
very nice toe point extension throughout her handstand. Here's the dismount, a very difficult oh, yes. Arabian double front, Again. and stuck it two days in a row. That's hard to do on a front flipping skill. What a talent, Miley O'Keefe. Utah solid on bars. All their scores are 9, 8, 1, 2, 5, and above. LeBlanc has the high score so far, 9, 8, 8, 7, 5. These flight skills from bar to bar, they rack up the bonus points when you connect those two difficult flight elements. And that dismount, superb and very difficult. Alyssa Bauman will be next up for Florida on the beam. Now the vault rotation is done. Vault goes faster than the other events, obviously. Olivia Troutman score for the Sooners in. It's a 99625. So the Sooners have a 49575, which is a huge score in that first of four rotations today. Vault is complete. And one more bar performer for Utah and three more beam performers for Florida, three more floor performers for Michigan. That was the volunteer assistant coach uh, speaking with Alyssa before this balance beam routine and uh, Amelia Hunley, one of the seniors that did not get to finish their season last year. So a lot of heart behind these performances and you will see right now a lifetime of preparation for this balance beam routine. Alyssa is one of the most beautiful beam performers in the country. She's coming after Lazari notched a 99125. Opens with her acrobatic series. Look at the alignment, the hips, the shoulders perfectly in line with the balance beam, keeping that center of gravity right Lisa over the Lisa center. Lisa on the bars for Utah, coming after Miley O'Keefe, got a 99375. Little bit short on that handstand, the transition to low bar. You want to see these right on top of the bar. She does them straight body cast, legs together, double layout, short and sweet routine, just a little hop on the landing. Alyssa is exquisite with her performance and execution. Watch these leaps, a very difficult switch half leap. Um, is a senior from Dallas, Texas. There are so many young gymnasts in this competition from Texas clubs. She won the SEC championships on this event. She is so amazing oh. and hangs on to the stick. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know how she did not fall backwards as she showed us all the famous college stick, arched her back back. I think that's mom. Oh <laughs> gosh. Three-time SEC balance beam champion. It's the first time in a 40-year history of the tournament that an athlete won one event three times. Alyssa Bauman. Sierra Brooks, what an all-arounder this sophomore is from Illinois. Coming after Abby High School had a 9-9-1-2-5. Opens with a very open, full-twisting double back. Pay particular attention to the level of difficulty of her tumbling and the extraordinary landing positions. Michigan has an outstanding first rotation here so far. Three scores, 9-9-1-2-5 or better, with Wojciech having a 9-9-5. And they have their two best to come. Front through to a double back. Look how high her chest is on the landing and the control just stepping into the lunge with a normal size step. This will be her third double back in this routine, this time it's going to be in pike position. A little more difficult than that tuck. Very oh. well executed. Really finessed that landing so she didn't step forward too much. Well done. She had a stellar performance yesterday in the all around. Tied for second. Unique for Michigan, they have four all around gymnasts. That means that 16 of their 24 routines in this meet come from just four young ladies, and they're outstanding. They can all score in the mid-39s, which is roughly a 9-9 average in the all-around. Incredible team. Trinity Thomas now, the junior from York, Pennsylvania, the number one all-around gymnast in the country coming into this meet. 
And this is only her second competitive beam routine since that injury. We were all amazed that she stepped into the all around yesterday. Melissa Bauman scores in 9-9-2-5. So after that fall from Peyton Richards, Florida is looking very strong here. They need a hit here from Thomas and one from Leah Clapper. Watch her acro series closely. She does the back handspring with one arm into the layout step out. Showing some originality. Oh! Just, oh, oh no. Oh my goodness. Oh. Fight to not touch the floor. It will be the same deduction as a fall, a fall on the beam. Mm. She has been superhuman all season long and really superhuman to step into these routines so soon after hurting both ankles. Six weeks ago, we were there when she sprained her ankles on an uncharacteristic landing off of the uneven bars, and that has affected her she has postseason. Bart carried this team on her shoulders all season long. I hate to see mm. the fall on beam, but, but hats off to this amazing athlete. It does put them in a hole, however. So here's the one. You could see, even on the one arm back handspring, how that arm kind of collapsed slightly to the right. So she was making corrections throughout, but fought to stay on. Wow, not what Florida needed in there. They have two misses. That means they're going to have to count one low score in this opening rotation on beam. Gabby Wilson, the sophomore from Gypsilani, Michigan, set to go after Sierra Brooks at a 9-9-1-2-5. And here's a scoring update. Michigan can take the lead after the first rotation if Gabby Wilson scores a 9-9 or higher. Oklahoma currently the leader with their effort on vault. Opens with a full out. Nice and open, very difficult tumbling pass. Michigan has showed off so many E elements. Gymnastic skills are rated from A to E, E the most difficult. Nice flow to that combination pass, the front layout to the front full. Watch the oversplit in these straddle positions. She has that nice combination of power and flexibility. Third pass is a double back, tuck position. Nice control. The gymnasts are allowed one step into a lunge to oh. show a controlled position. And they were so good yesterday in showing the control on those landings and again today. They already have four scores, nine, nine or better. Expect a big score for Gabby Wilson there as well. Wilson, the 2021 Big Ten floor exercise co-champion with a 9.95. Watch this pass, it's two flips. She stays open on the first one. As she goes into the second, she does that full twist. Big Ten champion, Gabby Wilson. What a first rotation for Michigan, Oklahoma, and Utah. An enormous pressure now here on Florida. Leah Clapper, how many times, Kathy, has she been in this situation and delivered big? Always, always in the anchor position. However, this one's a little bit different. There are two falls in front of her, so the stakes are higher. 2021 Scholar Athlete of the Year in the SEC. Opens with a triple series here. Always so solid. She stays so square with the balance beam and calm through the very end, then presses down into the beam to keep that center of gravity locked in to the beam. I've seen this routine so many times. I know where the smiles, the breaths are choreographed into the routine to stay relaxed, calm, but also aggressive. She has improved from her freshman year to this senior year, to this year. She has improved those leaps, the form, the shape in the air. 
See if she can get this stick. Hangs on, hangs on. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. A good fight for Absolutely. Leah Clapper. And a rough start for Florida as Jenny Rowland gives her a hug. Jenny, the head coach at Florida in her sixth season there, the SEC Coach of the Year, but Florida not what they wanted. But Oklahoma was hot on vault. Olivia Troutman with a big score. On fire, sky high vault, so controlled. Olivia Troutman delivered. So exciting to see her get that stick here. 9-9, nine, nine, for her there. And then for Michigan, it was Natalie Wojcik. And she was sublime on this routine. Elegant in the tumbling and the dance. Showed amplitude and difficulty. And of course, a huge score. All right, that wraps up our first of four rotations. And we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. It's been definitely a special one and there's been a lot of ups and downs from tens to injuries. It was hard for me to be on the sidelines, but it was actually a really cool perspective to really like watch from the outside. Trinity has done a great job embracing a leadership role in a little bit different position than just competing on all four events. Her soft-spoken heart, her encouragement for each team member. Trinity will just do anything she can. Uh, she loves the Gators so much. I'm really excited to be back for nationals and hopefully doing all around, that's the plan. So um, can't wait to get back out there and do my thing. As you said earlier, Kathy, Trinity has been a rock for Florida at the beginning of the season. But after that uncharacteristic mistake on the bars, hurt her ankle, has really upset her during the postseason. But look at this, four perfect tens this year, two on bars and two on floor. Tied for fifth in the NCAA history with a 39-9 in the all-around. That's unreal. And now Florida has dug a bit of a hole for themselves. They had to count a fall. Remember, six athletes compete. You count your best five scores in the team competition. So Florida needs to get tough if they're going to contend for their fourth national championship. The trophy will be awarded later today. Our coaches have such a creative way to approaching vault and practice. We really keep it fun, keep it different. We've broken the vault back down into basics. We've worked on every little detail that there is to work on. So I think that when we get into the meet, we can just sit back and be really confident in that event. To be able to have 6-10-0 vaults and be able to feel confident enough that you know you're going to go out there and potentially stick the majority of them is a great feeling. I think it carries us through all meets because it gives us that one event where we're like, yeah, like this is our event and we don't have to worry about the small things or things like that. We just go and perform. And Michigan will be on vault in this next rotation. Here is the meet summary after the first rotation. Michigan leads by five one hundredths of a point with a huge 49-625 on floor. Oklahoma counted two scores of 995 plus. And Florida, unfortunately, had to count one fall, so Florida trails .8625 from the leaders. Utah currently in third. In this rotation, Michigan on the vault, Oklahoma on the bars, Utah on the beam in your bottom left, and Florida on the floor in your bottom right with Megan Skaggs. Michigan and Florida are both on events. They are ranked number one. Michigan opens with a difficult Yurchenko one and a half and a stick. Michigan the only team in this competition doing six 10-0 start value vaults. Even the mighty Oklahoma Sooners just did five. On bars, Olivia Troutman is their leadoff performer. She leads off on two events and anchors the other two. Wow, look at the height on that <laughs> double layout dismount for bars. Great start for Oklahoma. She brings such energy and excitement to this program. So great that she's back in the lineup as a full all-arounder after nearly two years because of foot injuries. Megan Skaggs is as lovely on floor exercise. So expressive, just like on the balance beam.
Dragon does a two-pass floor routine really to protect fragile ankles. She's had her entire collegiate career, so she maximizes her score with her dance, her flair. Love this jazz routine. Natalie Wojcik next to go on ball for Michigan. You see her NQS, that's a national qualifying score based on four scores, two home and two away, tied for 12th in the NCAA and this event. Barchi has stuck this ball so many times this season. I know her fans want to oh! see it here, and they, wow. they got to see it. Oh, my. <laughs> In the biggest moment huh. of this season. That was special. That was even farther <laughs> away from the vault table than Olivia Troutman. It was fantastic. She balanced the height and distance. Look at the pop off the table. Gets four feet off the table while she travels away from it. And you're right, Bart, seven feet and with perfect control. She's coming off. after Abby High School, led them off with a 9.975. There's a great NBA Saturday primetime matchup tonight here on ABC and the ESPN app. Steph and the Warriors take on Jason Tatum and the Celtics. Our coverage begins with NBA countdown at 8 Eastern. Gabby Wilson will be next up to vault. Michigan off to a hot start on floor in their first two vaults were unreal. You're seeing why their top five scores are all ranked in the top 25 in the country. And I loved hearing how they break everything down for these vaults to really be able to stick in these moments. Yesterday they had only one score of 9-9. Nine, nine. Look at the height off the table. She had to hop forward. She had a little bit too much juice. Lucy Stanhope will be next up for Utah on beam. Alexia Birch led them off. Utah has been excellent on balance beam all season long. They're ranked third on this event. Stanhope, a member of the British national team. She competed at the World Championships. Utah has a smaller team than some of the others in terms of the numbers of athletes and the amount of depth, but the quality of their gymnastics is superb and the clean technique and execution, a trademark for the Red Rocks. Jordan Draper for Oklahoma on the bars as well. Opens with a single bar release move. For the Pike Diego, she has a little bit of form issues in this routine. Loses that toe point every once in a while. Sets up a dismount double front. Oh. Wow, another difficult dismount to stick, and she just finds it like a cat spinning out of the air. Wow. This feels like that anything you can do, I can do better. They're just sticking these landings all over the building. And at this level, these teams are so evenly matched, it's going to come down to those stuck landings as to who goes home with the trophy today. So far, Stan Hope has been steady on balance beam. She'll dismount with a round off one and a half twist, facing outward, blind landing, and nails it. Moments ago, Naomi Morrison on ball for Michigan, coming after Gabby Wilson at a 9.887.5. Rank number 12, also doing a Yurchenko one and a half. Watch for the change of direction if she pops up off the table. Nice. And gets good distance. Big hop afterwards, so they'll have to deduct for the landing, but no doubt the judges are impressed with the amplitude that they're seeing on all these 10-0 start value vaults. Big vaults, they're going high and they're going far from the vault table. All of that impressive. Anastasia Webb 
in the fourth spot for the Oklahoma Sooners. Now coming after Jordan Draper had a 9-9-3-7-5 for her. That's a career high. And this routine on bars is an eye catcher. Wait till you see the amplitude on her transition to low bar. Right here, it's a pack salto, oh. and it is sky high. Breathtaking. Look at the handstand right on top of the bar. Difficult transition, a Van Leeuwen up to the high bar. Sets up this very difficult dismount, double front, half twist, oh, yes. and huh. nails the landing. Oh my. That dismount is so difficult at the end to to spot the landing because you only get to see it a split second before you have to dial in that Look landing. That pack, though, is <laughs> just to die for. It's unreal. <laughs> and such a complicated dismount done so well. Moments ago, Sierra Brooks on vault. This has everything. Watch the speed on the run, the change of direction as she goes up. Nice! And oh. the hits just keep on coming. Oh, I should say the really? sticks keep on coming. <laughs> wow. Wow, she got a 9, 8, 7, 5 for that. Just unbelievable, uncanny with her ability to dial in those landings under this kind of pressure. Wow. Brandon Gugino, their final vaulter, the freshman from Tampa, Florida. And she's tiny, 4'11", but watch the power in this vault. Wow, the way she converts nice. that speed down the runway into the round off and then the block off the table. Reagan Smith now for the Sooners on bars. She struggled here yesterday. Let's see what she can do. Coming after Anastasia Webb got their second straight, 9-9-3-7-5. Big Ray to open the bar routine. Now watch this pack. She had trouble with it yesterday. Not a problem here. Nice handstand pirouette on the low bar. Judges want to see those pirouettes finish in the handstand. Calm, cool, collected, sets up the dismount, double layout, a little scoot forward. Megan Smith also from the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Here is Trinity Thomas. Florida trying to recover from a disappointing start on the beam. And I'm sure she's got her Wonder Woman uniform underneath this leotard because wait do you see this double layout even on recently injured ankles it oh is my. fabulous that's one of the best in the world Kathy absolutely wow amplitude on her leaps see how high she lifts off the floor and shows the full split Remember, it was six weeks ago where she sprained both ankles and had a bone bruise in her right ankle. So they have been bringing her along slowly so they can have her in the all around for this meet. They've altered this routine to protect her ankles. She's just gonna do two passes and do them beautifully, front full to front layout. Took out the season there at the end. And I know there are a lot of little girls out there dreaming of being a collegiate gymnast, you just got the greatest lesson of all. You fall, you get back up, and that's exactly what we just saw Trinity do. Well said, Kathy. So this pass is just gorgeous. It is breathtaking. The technique is superb. The height, the shape in the air, wonderful. Audrey Davis coming up on bars now. She's the anchor performer. Just a freshman for the Sooners coming after Reagan Smith and 9875. Bart, I know you and I smile through this whole routine. It is the most difficult routine in NCAA competition. Watch this Higgins turn right there into a high oh, hiked Jaeger. Unbelievable. So many gymnasts can't take that skill that high. Look at the superb technique. Perfect handstand position, straight arm work. 
tricky. Locks this in. It up. is tricky. Another Higgins roll into the double front right here. See if she can find it. Again. Got it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> she goes, oh, that was so close. Oh. It was a stick-ish <laughs> into a step salute. So. But regardless of the step, this routine is head and shoulders above all the routines on bars. Only this slight flaw at the end right there, that tiny step. Abby Paulson on beam now coming after Crystal Issa, head of 9-9-3-7-5. So Utah scores are 9-8-5, 9-9, and 9 9 3 it's a very difficult acro series. Side aerial to back layout, step out. Naya Reed on floor after Trinity Thomas got a 9-9-5. Naya is such a performer on floor exercise. She just lights up. And she can tumble. Opens with a high double layout. Perfect control on that landing. Superb work by Abby Paulson. Well done. Fought for that landing. Front layout to one and a half twist. We often see most gymnasts do a full out of that front layout. Just came in for Oklahoma's Audrey Davis on the bars, 9-9. Nine, nine. Watch the position of the chest on this double pike landing, nice and high, good control. Well, Florida came back strong on floor exercise. You can actually see why they're ranked number one on that event. There's a lot of energy on the sidelines there. She gets hugs and congratulations from her teammates, Adrian Burde, the assistant coach down there. The judges look for, obviously, the level of difficulty. A pike double back is more difficult than a tuck double back, and they look for that chest position right when their feet make contact with the floor, so they're nice and high. We'll have one final performer on floor for Florida. That'll be Alyssa Bauman. Adrian Randall, the junior from Corona, California. Had a 9-8-5 in yesterday's semifinals. But remember, no scores carry over. Everyone starts from scratch today. And Utah hung together to make a spot into the final. Look at their scores on beam, Kathy. Their low score is a 9.85. They have a 9.9 and a 9.9375. Utah ranked third in the country on this event. They've won nine NCAA titles and one AIAW championship, but their last NCAA title came back in 1995. They won the regionals this year with a 197.925 and the Pac-12s their sixth time this year. Adrian has some more unusual skills in her beam routine. A lot of the routines have the same skills. She has a little variation in her leap, in her leap series, her jumps. Score for Abby Paulson is in 99375. That's her second one in a row. series here, back handspring layout, step out right to the end of the beam. Here comes the beat jump. Now watch the position after this first jump. It's called a sheep. Right here, sheep jump. You have to arch back, eyes off the beam, and reach for the top of your head with your toes. Try that when you get up in the morning. Lisa <laughs> <laughs> Bauman beginning her floor routine. She's the anchor for Florida there coming after Nia Reed notched their second consecutive 995. Good job for the Gators. Alyssa can be just as beautiful on this event. Very dramatic floor routine this season. Now 
nice stick there for a Utah Bank. Look at the height of that first tunnel pass. Tuck double back. One and a half twist to a punch front full. A lot of twisting in her combination pass. A little more difficulty there than others. And where she excels comes up right here. Watch the amplitude and the position in these leaps. Right here, full split. Split half, stra straddle full. Final pass is a pipe double back. Oh, yeah. Perfect control. Oh, almost. Almost stepped her toe there. Oh. Ooh, had to change her finish position. She handled it pretty well, but that was not the normal choreography there at the end. Caught that mat, unfortunately, the sting mat, which is there to protect ankles on landings got in her way as she stepped into the dance. The 2021 All-American on beam and floor. Alyssa Bauman from Dallas. This pass was done beautifully. Pointed toes in the pike double back, held onto the landing, but stubbed her toe there and had to go into a different mode there and change the choreography, but got the gator chomp in there. Yeah, even mom is saying, what? What was that? It was that darn sting mat. So Florida back on track after an uncharacteristic rotation on the beam. Excellent scores on floor for the Gators, which is just what they needed. As Miley O'Keefe waits her turn. Took it at tied for first in the NCAA on beam. Look at that NQS. That's her average score of four scores, two home and two away. That's how good she is here. And Kathy, her gymnastics quality is just Oh, top line, isn't it? Absolutely. It is serene. It's such, such a lovely routine, so beautifully presented with all of the little details that are important on balance being the posture, the, the footwork, and the toe point. But she also has the difficulty, watch this, side aerial to a back layout step out. You'd never know how difficult that was. position with that back leg especially on those leaps really gets that up high enough for no deduction perfect control on her full turn combination dismount coming up she'll do a cat leap into her side aerial full Wants this stick oh, and beautiful. she got it. <laughs> that is just supreme beam work. From Lucy Stanhope with a 9 9 and then three 9 9 three seven fives in a row. And uh, icing on the cake, Miley O'Keefe in that anchor position. There will be five huge beam scores for Utah in this second rotation. All right, some highlights from that rotation include Abby High School, who led them off with a 9.975. Needed to raise the roof here in this <laughs> arena. They showed so many high vaults. Of course, the difficulty was there. Six, 10 0 start values, but the landings, wow. And for the Sooners on bars, it was Jordan Draper with a 9.9375 career high. And the wow, this is the wow factor. The height, the control, all under pressure. So well done. All right, Michigan has the lead with an impressive 99-275 Oklahoma in second. Now Utah, they embrace the title of the underdog. And we'll hear about that when we come back to Fort Worth.
folks, we had a team meeting and it was kind of like, just because you're seed number two doesn't mean you can't win. All the conference championships being won by underdogs really just shows how good the NCAA gymnastics is getting. You know, you is for Utah and you is for underdog and we love playing the underdog role. Uh, you know, we we're a little bit of a, we have a little bit of a chip on our shoulder. It gives us an opportunity to go out there and prove to ourselves that we belong. Take a look at the season stats for Utah. They won their Pac-12 Gymnast of the Year, Miley O'Keefe, the highest score at regionals in program history. And their whole season has been about unfinished business. They had no losses last year, and then the season was cut short. So they're hoping that this is the year that they could put it all together and challenge for their 10th NCAA title. The last time they won it was back in 1995. It's a rather exclusive champions club in 39 years history of the NCAA championships. Georgia's won 10, Utah 9, UCLA 7, Alabama 6, Oklahoma 4, and Florida has won it three times. Utah on a roll after the first two rotations. Let's get to know their senior, Alexia Birch. Hi, my name is Alexia Birch. I'm a senior at the University of Utah. Uh, I plan on becoming a nurse after I'm done with school. My favorite color is red. My favorite animal is a panda. And my favorite things to do are camping, fishing, and hiking. All right, when we come back, we'll move back to the next rotation. The top three teams in this competition, separated by just 15 one hundredths of a point. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Fort Worth. Dickey's Arena, I'm Bart Connor along with Kathy Johnson-Clark. Here is the meet summary at the halfway point. Michigan has led the whole way so far. Two scores of 9975 on vault and Oklahoma with four scores of 99 plus on bars. Utah, four scores of 99375 plus. Incredible. A season high for Utah on the beam in that second rotation. Florida coming back after a disappointing beam with an outstanding rotation on the floor. So here we are in the third rotation. Florida on the vault, Michigan on the bars, Oklahoma on the beam, and Utah will be on the floor. And take a moment, just a second, to, to see the moment in time we have at NCAA Gymnastics. We have representatives from the Big Ten, the Big 12, the Pac-12, and the SEC all here on the floor at the final. That's amazing. And a reminder that you can watch every single routine on the ESPN app. Each apparatus has its own channel, as well as the all-around channel, with all four apparatus going at once. You will not miss a routine. Abby High School. Wow, high flying straddle Jaeger there for her release move. Olivia Troutman on beam for the Oklahoma Sooners. She's leading off on two events and she is just money here on balance beam. Melissa, Melissa Bauman. Bauman on the vault. Opens with a strong ball for Florida. Altman, really comfortable in this lead-off position, Kathy, and, and it's such a critical position. And amazing, she's semester. really only competed in the last few meets on balance beam, and to be that confident, that calm and aggressive, wonderful. Perfect control on that landing. Combination pass, one and a half to front layout. Finishes with the traditional U up in the air. They're having a terrific meet, so those fans up there in the stands are so happy. U call currently in third, only 15 one hundredths of a point out of first. 
That's how close it is for those top three teams. Florida trying to claw their way back into it after a disappointment on the beam in that first rotation. Here is freshman Ellie Lazari. And this was a tough event for Florida yesterday in the semifinals. They could not find these landings. So gave a lot of tenths of a point away. Alyssa Bauma had a 9-8. Chenko fall, beautifully executed. Carly Bowman on bars after Abby Heiskill, a huge 9-9-1-2-5 to lead off the Wolverines. And a very difficult double front, step on that landing. Interesting note, they only have one dismount in this lineup that's not a D or E dismount, the highest level of difficulty. So they really push the envelope in terms of difficulty on most of the event, all of the events. Bowman, the freshman from West Des Moines, Iowa. Dislocated her finger earlier in the season and came back to deliver that performance at the biggest stage of women's college gymnastics this weekend. Incredible, Michigan on fire today so far. Earlier today, Savannah Shane here tweaked her ankle in warm-ups. Here, here it was. And you could tell immediately it did not feel good. They have taped it heavily. She did do another warm-up vault. It was a little bit short. But this is going to take a oh. lot of grit. Another you know, very difficult landing on that ankle. So I can only imagine what's going through her mind and the focus and intensity it's going to take to do a very difficult vault. Tied for 12th in the country on this event, the junior from Columbus, Georgia. They need all she's got here. Oh, oh and she hangs on to it. Wow, oh, that's amazing. That was heroic, honestly. Oh. That was heroic. After what we saw in the warm ups, we weren't even sure she was going to be in the lineup today, and she drills it. Gabby Wilson on bars for Michigan. Carly Bowman had a 9.8625 before her. Kept nice form on that Pike Jaeger. Judges are really looking for these handstands. They're looking for perfect form in and out of these skills. And of course, amplitude and difficulty on the dismount. Watch how straight this double layout. Oh, piked down a little bit and had to hop forward. Didn't quite get the shape in the air to find that landing. This is an E skill because she keeps the legs together and does it in piked position. We see a lot of straddle Jaegers, which is a D. It's a little bit more difficult. This dismount came out just a little too far, so kind of mistimed that release point in getting those feet up to find the landing. Megan Skaggs will be the next vaulter for Florida. She does a full twisting ear Chenkoa. Remind you, it's a 995 start value, but Megan probably does this vault as well, if not better than anybody in the country. She really gets the height, the perfect technique into the twist, and then watch when she flares out, finishes the full, arms go out, and then spots the landing, and she sticks it most of the time. Score for Savannah Shane here is a 98625. Good for her. shape in the air. Oh. Flares it out. Oh, hangs on <laughs> with those toes into the mat. She did land a little bit more forward than she usually does. I've seen her time and time again just nail that landing. This was quite as perfect, but boy, was it well done. The Sooners are on beam in this rotation. Jenna Dunn from Oklahoma City will be next up at a 9.85 in the semifinal. She's coming after a 9.8875 for Audrey Davis. I'm always proud to say that Jenna Dunn did her club training at Bart Connor Gymnastic Academy in Norman, Oklahoma. So great to see her as a walk-on 
on the biggest stage in collegiate gymnastics. Opens with a chest cartwheel. She performs a triple series. Lucy Stanhope begins her floor routine after Eddie Paulson head in 9875. Here's the triple series, two back hands quick to lay out, step out. Oh no! Oh no! Mm. A rare mistake for Dunn. back, got her chest up very quickly, but it was a little bit down right when she landed. Good control in the second pass. Now keep in mind that Florida had two falls. That's why Jenna Dunn fought to the very end. You don't want to give up any more tenths of a point because you never know which routine has to count. Finishes her routine with her combination pass back one and a half front layout. You're allowed one step forward out of the forward tumbling passes. Trinity Thomas does a Yurchenko one and a half twist. Florida has scores all in the range between 9.8 and the highest so far is a 9.8875. They have not broken into the 9.9. She has the capabilities of doing it with this one. Oh, so close. I, I truly can't say enough about it because I know that her she is not completely back and she has been nursing those ankles, but another heroic effort by Florida really came up with a big vault for them at the end of the lineup. Big scores for Michigan on the bars. Abby Heiskell led them off with a 9-9-1-2-5. Abby Brenner, a 9-9-2-5. Natalie Wojcik has a huge routine here, Kathy, but she struggled and fell on her risky release move yesterday in the semifinals. It was really an uncharacteristic Absolutely. fall. It was a rare mistake. She is always so impeccably and unbelievable. She's coming after Sierra Brooks had a second straight 9-9-2-5 for Michigan here. And you're right, this is an unusual technique she uses after this toe hand. This is a del job. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Everything is done above the level of the high bar. Unreal. And then watch the impeccable form. She just glues those ankles together, maintains the most beautiful toe point throughout this routine, fully stretched in these giants, and a... <gasps> oh! She stuck that in the warm-ups. Almost had a little bit too much juice. Slight over-rotation on a gorgeous double layout. But once again, the third straight outstanding rotation for Michigan. They are the leaders. Watch this. This is just, <laughs> as I said, worth the price of admission right there. That release move sky high. Couldn't quite find this landing. But She's well over 10 feet in the air on that release move and nailed it today. Score is in for Jenna Dunn now for Oklahoma. It's the 90625. So the final three beam performers under a little extra pressure here. Carly Woodard, Reagan Smith, and Anastasia Webb for the Sooners. All superb balance beam workers who have trained their entire lives since the time they were little girls walking in the gym to handle this kind of pressure. You gotta love it to be able to handle it. Carly Woodard missed seven meets this year with a foot injury. 
a senior from Overlark, Overland Park, Kansas, who has indicated that she'll come back for an additional senior year that's being offered by the NCAA. Her acro series is a side aerial into a back handspring. It'll come up right here. Very solid. What does it do to the mentality of the team when you have a fall on the beam, Kathy? As I said, you prepare for this. I mean, in order to be truly a great beam performer, you really have to embrace that pressure and feed off of it. It, it heightens your focus. It intensifies the calm, aggressive approach you need for beam. And you have to stay in the moment. And it's particularly when you're up on, on podium, there's a different bounce to the balance beam as well, and you have to learn to take your time, settle after each skill before you take a step into the next. The podium is that three-foot riser that all this equipment is on, and it makes the equipment a little bit bouncier. It's just like at the World Championships or the Olympics. Excellent. Clutch performance. Oh, oh KJ Kindler. With a hog there, Kindler has done a superb job with Oklahoma on the beam in her career. 15 years as the head coach at the Sooners. She's the only active coach in women's collegiate gymnastics to have won a NCAA championship. And she's the only coach who brought two different teams to the finals. She was the formerly the coach at Iowa State before Joe Castiglione at Oklahoma hired her to take over the program at the Sooners. Miley O'Keefe set to go on the floor, coming after Jaden Rucker, a 9-9-2-5. That was the first 9-9 plus score for Utah in this rotation on floor. And the best floor performers are seamless in the routine, the way they dance in and out of the tumbling to make this a complete performance. Miley does it exceedingly well. Love the way she sets up that second element, the front with the full. She lifts before she twists. Gorgeous shapes in these leaps. Full split. Love the way she uses her full body. This is what it, it means when you say dance full out. Another combination pass, back one and a half to front layout. Very good amplitude, excellent control. Very nicely performed. The sophomore from Las Vegas, All-American in the all-around end beam and the Pac-12 Gymnast of the Year. Reagan Smith, also a Dallas-Fort Worth local, tied for 19th in the NCAA on beam. Clutch performance here. Scores in for Carly Woodard, an outstanding 9-9. That's the first 9-9 for the Sooners on beam in this final. Reagan has exemplary training in her background for this event. I love the pace of this routine. Here's her acro, back hands from the layout, step out. <gasps> Just an arm circle, balance correction. It is, it is a deduction. It's the Big 12 co-champ on the beam along with Anastasia Webb. Her approach on beam is mu much more fierce. Look at the focus in her eyes, the Christmas crispness of her movement. Love this combination. Oh, Straddle yeah. half lengthwise Whoa. into the back handspring swing down. Last year as a freshman, the Big 12 Newcomer of the Year.
She has a combination dismount. She does it out of the back handspring right into Gainer full, nice lift oh. and beautiful amplitude on that dismount. What fight, good for her. Only the one arm circle to correct a balance. Reagan Smith, national and world gold medals back in 2018, a replacement athlete to the 2016 Olympics, doing her part for the Sooners here today in front of her hometown fans. Sydney Soloski will be the final Floor exercise athlete for Utah. They have two 9925s in a row, including that one for Miley O'Keefe. And this routine is just all fun. Energy. And big tumbling. Look at this. Double layout. Nice lift into that second somersault. Utah fourth in the country on this event. This is their best event in terms of national rankings. have benefited from the addition of Courtney McCool, who was just superb on floor exercise, perfect in her own right. She's the assistant coach here, volunteer assistant coach. the three-time All-American on floor exercise, a senior from Calgary, Canada. Finishes strong, back oh. on the half. A little soft knees on that layout, but I just love the way she performs this routine. All out. Wonderful performance quality. So far, it appears that Utah is having their best meet of the year, Kathy. They have been superb and clean everywhere. The highlight of the routine, double layout to open the routine. <laughs> the Red Rocks yeah. fans, they travel too, well, I tell you. They have one of the great programs, not only in gymnastics, but in all of women's sports. You go to a Utah gymnastics meet and there will always be at least 15,000 people in the Huntsman Center. That of course started with Greg Marsden over 40 years ago that built this juggernaut of a program that is now today contending for a 10th NCAA title. Anastasia Webb coming after Reagan Smith got a 9-9. And this routine just grabs you and doesn't let you go. The pace, the movement across the beam, is really extraordinary, it's so unique. From her hand gestures to her arm movement, her posture. And rock solid on that acro series. Look at the fierceness, you can see it in her expression, in her movement. She just traveled the entire length of the beam so quickly She has one of her best routines <laughs> going right now. Two switch leg leads. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. She just, instead of taking a check, she took that leg up and put it in an arabesque position. Exquisite instinct. Cool under pressure. <gasps> All oh! the way to the very end. Wow. She told us earlier in the year she loves the pressure, and did she deliver there? There were some teeny weeny little moments in there where she had to adjust, and yes, there are slight, slight deductions, but wow, that was impressive. Great job for Oklahoma, but Michigan has the lead, and they were outstanding. Natalie Wojcik with a 995 on floor. Showing off difficulty, amplitude, execution, and superb landings. Sierra Brooks on the bars. Sierra Brooks just continues to impress the super high flying, most difficult dismount in the competition. There is Bev Plocky, the head coach at Michigan. 
in her 32nd year. She has 24 Big Ten championships. That's the most by any coach in any sport in Big Ten history. But they do not have a national championship. They're in the lead as we go into the fourth and final rotation. Can the Wolverines do it? Olivia, you know, experienced that injury for a second time was really devastating. We all uh, know how hard she had to work through that last year and then basically to have it all start over again is so difficult. Finally getting the opportunity to compete at regionals and the all around, it was just an amazing feeling, like all my hard work has paid off. We love obviously having her out there and seeing her get that 10. Like, was I surprised? Absolutely not, because she is so clutch. I mean, every 10 is super special. So just finally sticking that ball and getting that score was just an amazing feeling and to celebrate it with my team was incredible. Getting Olivia Troutman back in the lineup for the Sooners after nearly two years out with that foot injury as an all-arounder. Injected a whole bunch of excitement and positive energy into this program. Look what she brings. Four tens, three on vault and one on floor exercise. And the Sooners will be on the floor in this next rotation. So here is the meet summary. Michigan has led from the start. The top three teams separated by less than two tenths of a point. Florida behind by over a point. So any one of those three teams, Michigan, Oklahoma, or Utah, could win it as we get set for the fourth and final rotation. The road to the national championships runs through NCAA.com with live broadcasts, exclusive access, and highlights of every championship. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Tournament will begin its third round on Sunday with the semifinals coming up on April 22nd and the championship on April 24th. So who will bring home this national championship trophy? Oklahoma, Michigan, and Utah won it. Michigan has never won it. Hi, my name is Anastasia Webb. I am a senior at Oklahoma. Um, a few fun facts about myself is that I am bilingual in Greek, and I have an older brother who used to be a T1 athlete as well. A line in Greek would be, Yasu Melen Anastasia Tikanis. And that's, hi, my name is Anastasia. How are you? Anastasia won the all around here yesterday. Here are the individual champions. Haley Bryant from LSU, co-champion on the vault. Maya Bordas on the uneven bars, a co-champion and the first national champion ever for the Cal Bears. Miley O'Keefe won uneven bars and a share of the floor. Luisa Blanco won the balance beam outright. Lexi Graber was a co-champion on the floor. And as I mentioned, Webb had vault and floor co-championships and the all-around championship all to herself. So we are set for the fourth and final rotation. It all comes down to this, Kathy. You know, we weren't even sure we were gonna have a season back in January the 8th when we started doing this. And during the pandemic, hats off to the athletes, the coaches, the administrators, and the officials, because here we are in the final rotation and three of these four teams have a chance to bring home that trophy. What an exciting season, culminating right now. Bars opens up with Peyton Richards for Florida. So your upper right is the bars for Florida. Miley O'Keefe on vault for Utah. A little bit chest forward on that landing for Miley. Nice fight at the end of that routine for Peyton Richards on bars. That's Carly Bowman on beam for Michigan. And she was consistent all season long. A little bit shaky at regionals, but solid as can be right now in this leadoff spot for Michigan. And Jordan Draper will be the first Sooner to go in this fourth and final rotation. High energy routine on floor exercise. Looking for control on these landings. Oklahoma trailing Michigan by .1375. Michigan is ranked fourth on balance beam during the regular season. Nice fight to hold that stick. Two for
front falls back to back in that middle tumbling pass. Kathy, it's interesting the psychology of this final rotation. Michigan has the lead and they're on the very stressful event beam trying to hold on. Oklahoma here on the floor can just pour it on and see if they can make up enough points to take over the lead. As Cammie Hall gets ready to go for Utah on the vault after Miley O'Keefe got a 9-8-3-7-5. This is a one and a half twist. Step off to the side on that vault so she was a little bit offline, slightly over rotated. As we have seen this year, Utah a little underpowered on vault. They'll need to stick those vaults if they want a shot at the title in this rotation. Back half to front, one and a half twist. Strong leadoff routine for Oklahoma, and as you said, they are playing chase at this point. Draper, the senior from Bedford, Texas, gets the Sooners off to a great start. All week long, the scores on floor exercise have been a little bit higher than the other events, so the Sooners do have an opportunity in this final rotation. Gabby Wilson set to go on beam. Judges Michigan taking. Wolverines have not trailed since the first rotation of the NCAA second round. They have just been lights out, not only in the regular season, but in the postseason. And talk about gymnastics in the Big Ten. As I Iowa was incredible this year. Yes. Minnesota won the Big Ten championship. And here it is Michigan, <laughs> who has right now in first place, hoping to bring that trophy home to Ann Arbor for the first time in their storied history. It's why NCAA gymnastics is so amazing right now. Great teams pushing each other. Crystal Issa on vault. Yurchenko full, big hop back. And as you said, Bart, because they don't have the big amplitude or the most difficult vaults, they need to stick these landings to hold on to those tenths of a point. Their first two scores are 9-8-3-7-5 and 9-8 for Utah on the vault. Here is Wilson. Carly Bowman led them off with a strong 9.85. And what I love about Michigan on beam is they do not hold back when it comes to difficulty. We have a few triple series in this lineup and two very difficult double back dismounts. Jordan Draper scored for Oklahoma in 9.8875. Just a slight balance correction after that layout. The judges take off anywhere from a quarter of a tenth of a point mm. off to a half tenth, even more. If you lift your leg to control your balance, it's a more significant deduction. If it's just an arm movement or a lean to correct your balance, it's a smaller deduction. Highlight of this routine coming right here. It's a big one. Double back. Yes. Huge dismount. Wow. Little scoot oh. on the landing, but love to see them go for that difficulty. This team powered by those four incredible all-around gymnasts back to the vault now. Lucy Stanhope. This is a one and a half. Could not get them. <laughs> She hasn't stopped yet. <laughs> I'm not sure if she saluted the judge or her coach. <laughs> oh my. Technically, you're supposed to come to a complete stop. She's still moving, Kathy. And at some point, make eye contact with the judge and salute. And uh, I don't know if she could find him. <laughs> They're a little excited. She's from England, so they do it differently over there. Sunday on ABC and the ESPN app will kick off MLS opening weekend with Inter Miami hosted David Beckham's former team, the LA Ga Galaxy. Our coverage begins at 3 Eastern. Jaden Rucker getting a couple of notes here on vault for Utah. She'll be next to go. Score just came in for Megan Skaggs for Florida on the bars. An outstanding 9-9-3-7-5. So even though in this final rotation, Florida is out of the running for the championship, they're doing a terrific job on bars. Actually, I misspoke. They, ha they have four one and a halves here for Utah on vault. They just need to stick that. If you're gonna take the extra risk of doing the more difficult vault, you really need to stick 
to take advantage of that. There you there go. There it wow. is. She put it all oh, together. My. More difficulty, 10-0 start value, and a stuck landing. Just what they needed, the Red Rocks. She had a 9-8-3-7-5 yesterday. We'll score better than that today for sure. Emma LaPinta now for Oklahoma on the floor after Heavy Schofer got a 9-9. Triple twist. The only one in this competition. Watch how she makes eye contact, really uses facial expression throughout this routine to perform and impress. Lauren Farley on beam for Michigan, coming after Gabby Wilson had a 9.75. So Michigan's first two scores on beam are 9.85 and 9.75. Meanwhile, the Sooners' first two scores on floor are 9.8875 and a 9.9. There's a triple series on beam. A can spring, two layouts. Needs a little bit more amplitude. She covered and covered well by turning to the side. The judges may take it. Minute deduction for that cover. On floor for Oklahoma, Emma LaPinta, the junior from Frisco, Texas. She was honored with the 2021 Elite 90 award yesterday. The top senior student athlete in gymnastics, the 4.0 student in communications for the Sooners. And she hits a good one when they need it. This is the only event that Lauren Farley is doing had to wait the entire meet to this moment. So far, she's handling it beautifully, very solid. She does a gainer pike off the end of the beam for her dismount. Runs forward, flips backward. Oh, little hop on the landing. Moments ago for Florida on the bars after Megan Skaggs' is nine. 9375 Savannah oh. Shane here. Oh no. Oh. Mm. And this has been such an important routine oh. for them. Oh. oh. So she did not continue her exercise. Obviously, as we said at the top of the show, that's heartbreaking for her. But you have six athletes and you just have to count your best five scores. Alexia Birch coming up on vault for Utah a moment ago after Jaden Rucker had a 9-9-8-7-5. Ranked 10th in the nation on this oh. event. <laughs> Found that landing. What a way to punctuate a superb weekend for Utah. A season high team score today. 197.85. Wow, what what a weekend oh. for Utah. As I as we talked about, the underdog in them just fueled a fantastic performance. Score in for Emma LaPinta on floor for the Sooners, 985. That score for Lexi Birch. A 9-9-3-7-5. So Utah goes to a 197-9-8-7-5. Improves upon their season high team score. What an effort for the Red Rocks. Will it be enough? The Sooners are on the floor and Michigan on the beam with three beam performers yet to go. And as we watch Alyssa Baum and wait for the score. That, it's a very difficult job the judges have when a routine is broken. They still have to judge it. Um, and she did only half of her routine. Sierra Brooks on beam now for Michigan. As Belle Johnson concludes her floor exercise routine for the Sooners. Sierra was on fire yesterday in the semifinals. Beautiful execution of that triple series. Very straight legs. 
Lauren Farley had a 9-7-6-2-5. So Michigan struggling a bit on beam. Their highest score is Bowman's 9-8-5. The other two scores in the 9-7 range. Meanwhile, Oklahoma pouring it on on floor in this final rotation. So far, moving very steadily. Nice front toss. Only deduction I've really seen so far are, the, are in the split leaps. A little bit loose in the back leg and not quite fully. Oh, you really need to be over split to impress those judges. But watch this, double back. Another incredibly <laughs> difficult dismount and just nailed it. What a great clutch performance for Enormous Sierra. pressure to finish on beam. Would you like to finish on beam or start a meet on beam, Kathy? I'll do either. <laughs> I like beam. <laughs> oh. I love this. Look at this triple series. Very straight legs throughout. That was a highlight of that routine. Here is Anastasia Webb on floor after Bell Johnson got their second straight 9.85. So the lowest score for the Sooners is 9.85 and the highest is 9.9. They have Webb and Troutman to finish it up. And I love this routine. There is just a wildness about her and the performance, the choreography, her musicality. When you dare to be different and you fully commit, it's special. Front double twist. Webb already with a spectacular weekend going with two individual event titles and the all around. Can she lead the Sooners to a team title here in this final rotation? Very difficult back one and a half twist to a front pull. Choreography is big, but it's also so subtly nuanced. She competed in the all around every meet this year and competed in every meet of her entire career for the Sooners. Watch the jump out of this one and a half twist. Oh yeah. It's just nice. gorgeous. I oh. hope people get a photo of that because that deserves to oh. be on the cover somewhere. You're <laughs> right. He jumps about six feet in the air at the end of that tumbling pass. What a weekend for Anastasia Webb. This is just so fun. As I said, somebody snap a photo right here <laughs> and put it on a stamp. Love it. Oh, what a finish. <laughs> Expect a huge score there. And what a relief for this young lady in her senior year. She was one of the top all-arounders last year before the season was cut short. And you talk about top all-arounders. Natalie Wojcik, one of the best gymnasts in collegiate gymnastics. And one of the best beamers in the country. Just natural on this event. Watch her feet. The the instant her foot leaves the beam, that toe is pointed and it does not unpoint until it touches it again. This is unbelievably close between Michigan oh. and Oklahoma. Sierra Brooks had a 9.9625. Beautiful position in those leaps. She gets that back leg up, locks those knees tight and straight. These final two beamers for Michigan are unreal. Wojcik and Heiskill. Triple series, two back handspring to lay out. Look at the determination how firmly she plants every skill. Those feet work into the beam, not just on top. So steady. Gorgeous position when she kicks that leg up and back, goes up on high toe. It's the details. And the dismount, if she can stick, this is a beauty. Oh, wow. That is Unreal. pure gorgeous. And did they need that <laughs> routine, the junior? Oh, oh, what a moment. That was breathtaking, truly. Even in slow motion, look at the perfection. Just so beautiful, precise. Focused, tough. Wow, and remember the scores for Michigan were not that impressive. 
in the first three routines, but a 9-9-6-2-5 for Brooks. A, expect a huge score for Wojciech. And we go to the floor where Anastasia Webb score is in 9-9-6-2-5. And here is Olivia Troutman. With a big double layout. And two very contrasting styles for the final two performance for Oklahoma. High energy, big smile. Beautiful Sison out of that combination pass. Remember, she struggled with foot injuries for nearly two years and only returned to the lineup as an all-arounder at the regionals a couple of weeks ago. And here she is lighting up the Dickies Arena. You add the joy that she must feel just being able to perform and compete and how tough she is. She is a gamer, as KJ Kindler said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, oh. They threw down the gauntlet. Troutman, the final floor routine for the Oklahoma Sooners. Expect a big score. This is going to come down to the final routine of the night, folks. Look at them fight for every single tenth of a point. Those feet push off the floor, control these landings. What an unreal finish for the Oklahoma Sooners. They have not led all day. It's been Michigan since the start, but they haven't been far behind. Less than 15 one hundredths of a point coming into this rotation behind the Wolverines. Natalie Wojcik, a 9.9875, well-deserved. And their final beamer, Abby Heiskell, up now. Amplitude on that cat loop into the side area. You see the score on the bottom right. Oklahoma and Michigan currently tied with a 198.075. Which are huge scores, team totals right there. Remember, six athletes compete. You count just your best five scores. So a hit here could secure the win for the Wolverines. Her acrobatic series, but counts from layout, step out. Solid as can be. And she's presenting with good form, straight legs. This is enormous pressure. Michigan has never won the national when it comes championship. Down to the dismount. Oh, oh beautiful. Oh, it was yes. gorgeous. There was a little hop there, but oh my gosh, I can't even like I feel <laughs> I feel this feeling oh, all the my. way up here, and we are a mile away, Bart. Oh my <laughs> goodness, what a meet Abby High School had. Oh. So now we've done the math. High school needs a 9.85 for Michigan to win the championship, Kathy. I think it is academic. That was amazing. <laughs> Unless we missed something, Oklahoma poured it on in this final rotation on the floor. Troutman scored a 9.9375. A huge score for the OU Sooners now, their final score. 198-1625. And an incredible clutch performance right there at the end. Went down to the dismount, a tiny hop, and now it's in the judges' hands. The Sooners going for their fifth championship in seven seasons. Michigan has never won. And it's a... <laughs> they think they've got it. We have no confirmation yet. They're looking at individual judges' scores come up and trying to do the math as we are. Wow. Remember, six judges, you throw out the high and low scores. You average the four in the middle. Feel the tension. <laughs> It's oh. in! The score is in a 9925. <laughs> they have just found the oh. Holy Grail. Oh my gosh. What a moment. Welcome to the club. 
a rather exclusive club of only six teams that have won a national championship. Well, now there are seven with a school record team score. The Wolverines led from start to finish a 198-25. Oklahoma so close in second, Utah in third, and Florida in fourth. What a season led by those four superb all-arounders. Beth Plocky and the Wolverines get their first NCAA championship in her 32nd year as their head coach. How sweet is this and how wonderful for the sport of gymnastics. Twice Michigan has been second in 95 and 99. It's been a long time coming. A well-deserved title. We'll talk to them when we come back to Forward. What a thriller. Okay. An exciting day at gymnastics. What fun. We were on ABC. I hope a lot of people become gymnastics fans from what they saw today, Kathy. Great stuff. We'll be back. All right, the Michigan Wolverines. In their storied history of the program, twice they were second in the NCAAs, but today they reign as champions, and man, it was close. They had to have their best meet of the year in a season high to upend the Oklahoma Sooners, just behind in second place. Utah third, and Florida finishes in fourth. Wow, what a weekend of gymnastics we've had. I'm Bar Connor, along with Kathy Johnson-Clark, and. Uh, Kathy, you know, we weren't even sure we were going to have a season because of the pandemic. And for it to all come down to the final gymnast on the final rotation, it couldn't be better. I can't imagine a better finish. One of the most exciting NCAA championships I've ever witnessed. It was amazing and so phenomenal for gymnastics and, of course, Michigan. Well, let's go down and talk to Bev Plocky and Sierra Brooks. Now, Bev, you've won 24 Big Ten championships. You're the most successful coach in Big Ten history up there, but this one has to rank at a whole nother level. Congratulations, Bev. What's going through your mind right now? Uh, I'm just so overwhelmed, and I'm so proud of this team, and I'm so happy for the sacrifices and the hard work and everything that they put into it this season. And I'm so thankful to all the people that um, allowed this to happen, made this happen for us. Um, I'm. I'm just so overwhelmed right now. I'm not even sure what to say. <laughs> well, I'm Beth, happy. I'm very happy. Yeah. Beth, I'm with you. I ran out of superlatives a long time ago. Sierra, you were lights out two days in a row. Is there any way you can put into words what this means to you? I mean, I've said it before. It means the world. Our team has talked about this for so long, and I think even waking up this morning, we were like so just eager to be out there because we knew we could do it and we did it and it's just, I mean, we're national champions and that's, it's crazy. I'm so excited for this team. If you can tell all the young gymnasts out there how to handle the kind of pressure you guys dealt with for two days, give them some words of advice. I mean, trust your training. If you come out every day and you do what you do in the gym, it's going to pay off. I think we walked into this and we just told ourselves, do your gymnastics. You don't overdo it, you don't underdo it. Trust yourself, and that's what we did today. We came in confident and it paid off. Now, Bev, you told me that after the regionals, you got your team together and said, we have the makings to win a national championship, and they did not disappoint today. That must have been a seminal moment for you to instill that confidence in your team. I mean, it was, and you know, it's one of those moments as a coach, we say a lot of things to our athletes. <laughs> I'm just glad they were listening to me and they believed me because I have believed in this team for a long time. And I just wanted them to, to really realize and embrace how good they are and what they had the capability to do. And um, what they did this year is nothing short of amazing. I'm incredibly proud. Congratulations, Sierra, and congratulations, Bev, and to the Michigan Wolverines, their first NCAA championship in school history yes. for this storied program. What a superb finish here in Fort Worth. We'll come back to wrap it all up in a moment. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup standings update as teams compete for a combined $400,000 scholarship donation from Capital One. 
Well, Kathy, it came down to the pressure-filled balance beam, and it came down to the final three athletes at Michigan to deliver the victory. What pressure. And one after the other with ice water in their veins. They stepped into these lineup positions with poise, precision, fight to the very end. Left it all on the floor. So Michigan joins that exclusive club of teams that have won the NCAA championship. What a weekend of gymnastics. We're glad you joined us here on ABC. Michigan is this year's national champions. Tune in now for, for the NCAA championship trophy ceremony on the ESPN app. I'd want to say to all the athletes, congratulations on a magnificent season. And for our producer, Kara Lagana and Kathy Johnson-Clark, my analyst, this has been superb. What a way to wrap up gymnastics in 2021. Thanks for watching, everybody. with a score of 197.1375, the Florida Gators. Finishing in third place with a score of 197.9875, Seven five, the Utah Utes. With a score of 198.1625, placing second, the Oklahoma Sooners. And your 2021 NCAA Women's Gymnastics National Champions with a final score of 198.2500, the Michigan Wolverines. Congratulations to Michigan, their first national championship in school history. Yeah.